He's awesome. He's a way maker. Amen. He is a protector. Has he kept you during this pandemic? Amen. Has he kept you? I'm even here to say I don't have what I want, but he has given me what I need. Amen. I don't have everything that everybody else may have, but he has met and supplied every one of my needs. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do my best. I've had folks here praying with me all week, and, and uh, physically I am tired, but spiritually I am filled up. So you all pray for me today. I believe y'all, who, whoever's going to be here second service, you'll get the same thing. We're going to give you a little bit of a meal prior to, and then give you another part of the meal later, and it's all going to be the same meal. Amen. So pray for me. Amen. I have been led after wrestling with several texts all week, and and, and an old preacher once said to, to us, uh, and I've heard it for years, that you should have a sermon in your pocket. Amen. One in the book and one in your heart. Amen. So you are going to get the one from my heart today. Amen. Uh, turn to 1 Kings, the 17th uh, chapter and beginning at verse 1. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Kings, 17th chapter, verses 1. Verses 16. Praise God. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and as I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up before or because that there was no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, and get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zion. And dwell there, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and he came to the gate of the city. And behold, the widow woman, he had called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, And bring me. That's, that's the way the text should read. And by the way, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, mm, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make thee thereof a little cake first. Make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went. And did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Say many days to somebody. Amen. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake 
by his prophet Elijah. God, we stand in the midst of your holiness right now. And we thank you that you are a God that keeps us in the valley. You shield us and hide us from the rain. And even when there is a drift, God, among us or in us or about to happen, you can keep us there. Amen. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. I want to speak to you today of uh, be careful of the drift in the drought. Amen. Be careful of the drift in the drought. We have uh, gone and experienced some, some difficult times over the last year, and some have experienced uh, it in various ways. Uh, you may have experienced it financially. You may have experienced it uh, in a health crisis or health situations. You may have experienced it emotionally. Uh, but the Lord has been just impressing this word in my spirit. I didn't even know why, but drift. As I thought about our church and as we were not meeting and the Lord just kept you know, speaking to me, it was necessary for us to be out. I get that for, for safety reasons. It was also necessary for us to be out just for, for uh, protocols that were being in place and the numbers. But at the same time, spiritually, in my spirit, I kept feeling this word drift. Amen. And if we are not careful in lean times, in pandemic times, in hard times, in difficult times, if you are not careful, believer of the Lord, you can, without even knowing it, you can drift. Amen. 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 I, I, I know that I'm right about it because it, it is acted out in how we drive our vehicles. What Whatever you look at when you are driving, if you are not careful, you will drift towards that thing. Amen. I have been out in the water, and there were times as I was out there, I remember one specific time uh, at the ocean, I was there, and, and I went out to try to impress my, my, my new bride, amen, and, 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 and I was out there on this little raft looking thing and, and I kind of got a little bit uh, uh, careless and a little bit uh, uh, lackadaisical and at rest and at peace, yeah. somebody hear me today, and before I knew it, the waves had pulled me out farther than I wanted to go, drift. God has been laying on my heart this push focus that we have, worshiping our Savior and Lord, evangelizing the lost world, and mentoring generations to lead. And in the midst of thinking about that one day and our, uh, uh, our theme for the year, prayer changes things, God dropped something right to me in during the fast that, you know, Christian people are ministered to in three different ways. They are ministered to, number one, uh, through their spirit man. Amen. Then they are ministered to mentally, and then we minister to each other uh, in various ways bodily and through relationships. But if you're not careful with your upward relationship, you will start to drift away mentally and physically. Amen. And so... It is the importance of that we are here today and we carry forward, we carry on uh, the best we can because if we're not careful, there can be a drift in the drought. Yeah, amen. 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 Elijah, by God's word, had commanded this drought. If you know the story, we can't back up too long this morning. Amen. But if you know the story, you know that God had sent Elijah and he told Ahab that as long as uh, there shall be, as long as the Lord God of Israel liveth, behold, before whom I stand, there shall not be any rain. He even took it a step further. There won't even, even be any dew. Mm -hmm. Amen. There won't be even any night uh, uh, rain, any night precipitation. There's going to be a drought. There's going to be famine. There's going to be dryness in the land. Amen. 
I want you to know today that according to God's word, verse 1, that a drought or lack of rain symbolizes punishment for sin. Amen. It could it be today an application? I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, but could it be an application today that the Lord has allowed Corona, amen, and allowed COVID-19 and whatever else you want to call it, this pandemic because of sin, amen. Sin is the reason. Sin is the background. Sin is the backdrop. So God sometimes allows little things to come in to arrest our attention, and to stop by and let somebody know that I am still God. Has you got your attention during this pandemic? I'm God. I can do what I want. I can act how I want. I can enact what I want. And the reason that there was no rain is simply because Israel had drifted away. They had gone into worshiping the scriptures say they had worship gone into worshiping Baal. Baal worship, a detestable and ugly and gross idolatrous practice. I said last week, beware of a wicked woman and a weak man. Come on, man. Amen. <laughs> Ahab was a weak man. And Jezebel was a wicked woman. My Bible tells me that as they began to promote the, the, the worship of Baal that Israel drifted away. And then it comes to the text of our man today. The Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying. So during this time of struggle and trial, because not only did Elijah uh, 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 pronounce the drought by God's power, but he also had to endure the drought. Amen. No one looked at he he was in the drought that he said was coming. So sometimes God's people hear me this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes we we have to endure the things that come along for the lot of everybody. Amen. We have to go through some things. So Baal worship had come along and it had caused the drift. And Isaiah pronounced or Elijah pronounced the drought, but he had to go through it. Amen. Says. Get to the bubbling brook. God says, go down to the brook called Cherith. Amen. And Cherith means cut off, separation. Amen. So God separated Elijah. And notice this. God kept Elijah. He kept Elijah during this drought. Y'all read the text. I, I won't go through it all, but read it and check it out. God fed Elijah. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. He, amen. he fed him, if I can, with my sanctified imagination, with chicken. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, he, the, bird, the Bible says the birds brought him meat. Mm -hmm. What better meat to have? Amen. He, the birds brought him meat, and they not only brought him uh, meat, but they brought him bread. So go and get down to the brook and I'm going to give you drink and I'm going to give you bread and I'm going to give you meat. Amen. But don't you like when the Bible says this? How many of you know verse 7? There's an amazing and a famous Bible phrase. And it came to pass. Mm -hmm. Don't overlook that. That, that, that phrase, we can't uh, get past it because here it is. Elijah was chilling at the brook. Amen. Elijah was chilling and getting fed and had uh, meal deliveries by Raven Express. Oh, Amen. Y'all ain't helping me in here this morning. He was chilling and he chilled there for a long time and the brook is bubbling. Amen. Long before we had apps our phone that could play sounds to put you to sleep. Amen. He was chilling by the brook. Ahab and Jezebel, you, you go on and do your mess and, and I'm, I'm going to hide away. I'm going to steal away to Jesus. I'm by the bubbling brook and I've got meals delivered to me and I'm, I'm chilling and I'm alright. Then it came to pass. 
that the brook dried up. Amen. Don't you drift in the drought. My friends, my sisters and brothers, be encouraged this morning. I'm glad Elijah listened because here's the deal. He could have stayed there and got mad at God and said, why did you allow my comforts to dry up? Why did you mess up a good situation? I, I've served you. I've done all I'm supposed to do. But why are you messing with me? And here the brook, and it came to pass, and the brook dried up. No more water. Amen. The raven stopped flying in. And God's word comes to Elijah and says to him, here's what I want you to do. I want you to leave from the bubbling brook. And go to a place which I will show you. Isn't that just like God? He, he's done that to Abraham. Get thee out of thy country and go to a place that I will show you. He, he didn't tell Abraham ahead of time, here's where you're going. He just said, get. Amen. And here, right here, right now, he says, go down to Zarephath. He at least tells Elijah where. Get thee out and go to Zarephath. But here's the problem. Zarephath is the hometown of Jezebel. Oh, come on now. He's on the run. He's hiding. He's kept by the bubbling brook. But then God says, go down and go to Jezebel's hometown. It's not even an Israel place. It's not even in Israel. It's outside of our limits, so to speak. It's, it's outside of where my safety zone. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. It's outside of my comfort zone. You see, my comfort zone was the brook. My comfort zone was my meals on wheels by Ravens Express. My comfort zone was there chilling. But now you tell me to go down to Jezebel's hometown. Amen. But then I love what the scriptures say. Y'all still praying with me? Yeah. He, 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 the, the Bible says that he is told that I have, amen, hallelujah, I have commanded a widow woman. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. I have commanded a wit widow woman. Look at the text. Verse 9. I there, if you get there, Elijah, if you go to where I tell you to go, there I have commanded a widow woman. Stop, amen, to sustain you. Amen. Wow. So if you're not checking the text and if you missed it, here it is. You can drift if you fail to realize. And you might be drifting if you fail to realize. Maybe you already, like me, on the raft out in the ocean not paying attention. You might be drifting. Amen, church folks, Christian folks. You may be there if you fail to realize that God can use anything. To sustain you. You're looking, trying to figure it out. We in the church, we are trying to work things out. We have tried to struggle and strain and keep things together. But here's the news. Right, did you catch the text? He told Elijah, go from comfort to a widow woman. Y'all remember last week, widows have nothing. The widow from last week's story and the one from the week before, amen, and two weeks before that, those widows, if you were a widow in the Bible, you had nothing. Well, how do you know she had nothing? She was looking for two sticks, and she had an oil in a cruise, and she had a handful of meal. That's all she had, and her son, and they were going to make a cake and eat it and die. And God says, send Go, Elijah, to the widow woman. I'm going to sustain you with a widow woman who has next to nothing. You may be drifting if you fail to realize, help me, church, that God can take something and make something out of nothing. Come on, man. Come on. Praise God for the moments in my life when he has shared with me and shown me that it doesn't have to be something big. It doesn't have to be something grand and grandiose and huge, but Christian, I can take the smallest of things and make it happen. I can sustain you with a widow woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can make it happen so there he is with the widow woman. 
And make no mistake about it that Zarephath, it has a name too, it has a meaning. Zarephath means workshop or refinery. Lord have mercy. So Elijah is sent to Zarephath, uh, Jezebel's hometown. He's sent there for a reason. The Lord is refining. Amen. And not only is he sent there for the widow woman, but she's already in place for him. I wish I had a witness. Do you know that there are moments in our lives that God allows us to come here and to connect for a reason? I need you and you need me. Amen. No man is an island unto himself. It's a good thing that we're in the house of the Lord. It's a good thing that this handful of folks are here at this particular time. God is speaking to somebody here, and you need to hear what he is saying. There are times when paths cross, and he has ordained it for a purpose and for a reason. If you go, if you go your own way and you miss Zarephath, you may miss a refining moment. May be drifting if you don't recognize that God has an assignment on your life. I wish I wish I had one witness in here that says, you know what, Pastor, I, I get it. I, I understand that you see, when God has an assignment on your life and you're not doing it, you won't get much rest. When God has an assignment on your life, there are times in your life that He will do like Elijah did you can be chilling and you know, well, wait a minute, I feel like God's telling me this, God is telling me that, and I'm okay, and I'm back here just hanging out, doing my thing, I'm okay playing the piano, I'm okay sitting in the pews, I'm chilling by the bubbling brook, and then all of a sudden, amen, like a mama eagle does, the eaglets, the little babies, God begins to pluck the plus out of the nest, amen, and things start to poke and to hurt and to move you around, guess what? That is prime to let you know that many times God has an assignment Amen. on your life. Amen. You may be drifting if you don't recognize his assignment. And here's what I found out. Many times he will make it really clear during a drought. Amen. Amen. See, if everything's easy, then you have nobody to worry about. If everything is going well, then you are at ease in Zion. Amen. If everything is all right, if God never allows the rain to fall a little bit, the proverbial rain on your heads and allows the storms to come, then sometimes you can just get lackadaisical and you can begin to drift. You can begin to focus on things. You can begin to focus on materialistic aspects. You can begin to just focus on your job, focus on your career, focus on your friends, but sometimes God allows things to come in and stir up the nest and dry up the brook and send the ravens away. And sometimes he'll send you to, I wish I had one witness, to your enemy's hometown where he has prepared a widow to sustain. The widow was prepared to die with her son. She was in a predicament. Amen. She was between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> yeah. But then God says to Elijah, tell her, no, you're not going to die. Take care of me first. Mm -hmm. And then what you have will not run out. Mm -hmm. You may be drifting if you don't understand that God's got to come off the top. God desires his blessing from us, amen, his giving first. Spiritually, there is a tithe. Physically, there is a tithe. And tithing is not just about money, amen. Am I preaching to somebody in here? But tithing is about your time and about your resources and about what God has given you. And all he asks is that you just come to me first. Amen. Giving him the first of your day is best. When you get up in the morning, it's 
not time to work out. Amen. It's not time to do all these other things. Get up just a few minutes earlier and give God some time. You may be drifting if you get caught up in your schedule and you think it's all about you. The widow woman. The widow woman says, now wait a minute, preacher. You said, get me a glass of water. I can do that, but by the way, you're asking me to get you water in a drought. But I'll work with you. I'll work with you. And then he says, and while she was headed, and by the way, go ahead and make me a cake. Make preacher man a cake. We ain't got nothing but a handful of meal. Hold on. We're about to take these two sticks and make a fire and a flame and, and, and make this cake and eat it and die. He said, no, God said, you're not going to die. But you give God some off the top first. Amen. Bless the man of God. Hey, give God the first fruits. Verse 12. Verse 13. And then on down to verse 16. And it says, and the barrel of meal wasted not. Amen. You see, this widow woman needed Elijah just as much as God had sent Elijah to her and he needed her. Amen. He no longer had the brook. He no longer had the ravens and he's in his enemy's hometown. But how do you know David had it down when he said, and the Lord prepares a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Give God the best. You notice the widow has said here, the Lord, your God. Don't overlook that. Look at it. It's in uh, verse 12. It says, as the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a little cruise of oil that I may go. And, and, and she says, I pray thee. Uh, that, that will back it up. It says, the Lord, your God. Amen. As the Lord, verse 12, as the Lord, thy God, liveth. So she is saying to him, he may be your God, but I'm not sure about me. So you mean to tell me that God sent Elijah to a woman who was on the outside looking in? Well, that's the beauty of the assignment, my sisters and brothers. He doesn't always send us to the most likely people. I wish I had one person in here to recognize that somebody, sometimes he sends you way around, as my mom used to say, way around Robin Hood's barn to get you to where he wants you to go. So he may send you to your, your enemy's hometown so that you can touch and reach somebody that's on the outside looking in. See, the woman had a death perspective. Amen. We're going to eat this cake and die physically, but I imagine that since she said the Lord, your God. Yeah. She might not have known God for herself. I, I, I gather that because if you go on down to the end of the chapter, she says in verse 24, and the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Amen. Amen. You may be drifting. You don't realize that your assignment is not just to the most likely of folks. Come on now. God will send you to people you didn't even know. God will send you to people that you think they can't help me. What 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 do I have in connection with them? I, 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 we don't even share things in common. Don't you underestimate God. God will cause your path to cross with who he wants. But you may be dripped and hear me today if you fail to realize that he's God over the oil. Amen. God over the meal. God over GPS systems. Amen. Leaving Cherith and going to Zarephath. God has a way of doing what he wants in your life. And he will do it whether you want it or not. Don't drift. Don't drift. Don't drift. Don't drift. You may be drifting in your walk with God if you fail to realize that God can sustain a prophet, a person with birds and a brook and a broke widow. <laughs> but the last thing I want to let you know, and then I'm going to 
take my seat. Watch this. You may be drifting if you don't fail, or if you realize or don't, don't realize, or you fail to realize that God can change natures. Amen. Amen. Do you get that? God can change natures. There in Zarephath, the widow, she had a cake to eat, and most folks wouldn't have come up off that cake. Amen. Y'all ain't helping nobody in here. You know what it's like when there's the last, mm -hmm, the last one of something in the refrigerator. And y'all seen the commercials where they're running, trying to get to the last. Hear me today. God changes natures. It was God who changed the widow's heart and said, okay, whatever. We got one little handful of meal. I guess I'll go in here and give it to this man that just showed up at the city gate. But, 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 but wait a minute, did you miss it? Back it on up to the brook. Hallelujah, I hear you brother. Back it on up to the brook. Hey, Amen. If you think about it, a raven, yeah. A raven is a meat eating bird. So how could God take a meat eating bird and change that bird's nature to bring meat to a man who is meatless because he's God. See, the, the beauty of it is God can change the nature of a situation. God can change the nature of somebody's life. God can change nature. So where I'm going to stop and drop off is here. He changed my nature one day. How about yours? He changed my nature one day. I was on my way to a devil's hell. Amen. About to split hell wide open. I did not know who God was, but then I heard from heaven. Amen. I heard about Jesus. I heard that he died. I heard that he was buried. I heard that he got up one morning early on a Sunday. I heard that he is the king of kings. I, I heard that he is the Lord of lords. I heard that he is the lover of my soul. And I accepted who he was and who he is. And he changed my nature. How about you? How about you? See, you may be drifting if you real don't realize that God can take these folks walking up and down the street that have no mind of God. They look like they're out of their minds, out of the world, out off their rockers. God can turn those people around, but you gotta catch his drift. Yeah. Gotta get in the flow. Hey, Creek, I'm gonna say this to you, and I'm finished. Whatever God is going to do in this church, starting today, right now, begins with you. No coincidence that God had you all here today. Amen. In some capacity, everybody here is a leader in this church. In some capacity, God has, amen, I see it now, Holy Ghost, thank you. God has here who he wants here. But get this, you might be drifting if you fail to realize and fail to see the gentle flutterings of the Holy Ghost and what he's doing in our church and what he's doing in lives, amen, it is necessary and it is imperative that we get it, we catch his drift. God does not do things like normal folks because he ain't normal. Did you say he's extraordinary? Amen, I've sang with ordinary people for years and this was our catchphrase, we're just ordinary people serving an extraordinary God. He's awesome. As you stand to your feet, thank you for praying with me this morning. Don't drift in this drought, but come in close. Stay connected. Stay in tune. Amen. Stay. Amen. Even though we're not in the fast, stay in close to where the Lord is speaking. Don't drift. And more importantly, encourage somebody that you see drifting. You better come on back in. Where you can be fed, where you can be nourished, where you can be led, where you can be held. As we bow our heads, God, we thank you this morning for the priest's word.
And Lord, it is not at all what I had in mind. But you are extraordinary. And you do what you want. Lord, right now we declare that you are over this church. And it is not by our declaration, but it is simply us acknowledging that this is your people. You have purchased them with your own blood. And so God, in Jesus' name, help us to be a witness in the land as there is drought, as there are hard times. This pandemic, it does not look like it may go away. I, I don't know, that's up to you. But while we're in the famine, while we're in the drought, while pestilence abounds, while all sorts of craziness is happening, while folks have gone off and are worshiping Baal and doing all sorts of detestable things, help us to hear your voice. And when it comes to pass, help us to move, not drift, not be out of season, but be in season, be where you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray.